Hi, uh, in this video uh, I'm explaining uh, the Searle's cone apparatus uh, which is a practical experiment to find the mechanical equivalent of heat. Why do we use the word equivalent? Uh, let's say you're rubbing your hands together, you're creating some friction and that friction is raising the temperature of your hands. It's the same as warming your hands up on a fire. So in this way the scientists found an equivalence between mechanical energy and heat energy and uh, that equivalent quantity is called J and we'll come to that at the end of this experiment. Let's now get into the uh, arrangement uh, of uh, Searle. As you see in the image here, there is a motor at the bottom, uh, blue and yellow. The motor has got a shaft coming out. The shaft is connected to a conical glass. Uh, actually, it need not be a glass. It's just for your demonstration here and the conical glass rotates uh, when the motor is switched on. Inside there is a container of water and you can see a blue colored water out there and to the container is fixed a top plate with weights. The top plate has a purpose to seal the heat inside and also to add weight to the container so that when the cone rotates the inner container does not rotate and that's just like moving one hand against the other to warm your hands up. There are two more parts over here. One is the stirrer. So this is a lovely looking stirrer. Uh, we don't use a spoon like uh, we would use uh, to make a hot cup of coffee uh, because here there is no sugar to mix. So that was just a joke. Uh, but more importantly the uh, thin uh, rod of the stirrer ensures that we make a very small hole in the top plate and we don't lose heat in the experiment. We will see that in the animation shortly. The other part to be added is a thermometer. So as you can see uh, in this image, uh, there's one more hole to be made in the top plate to fix the thermometer through that plate and uh, dipping into the water. Now we come to the animation. So switch on the motor and the cone is rotating in a clockwise direction and the stirrer is moving up and down. So what's uh, happening here is that we created mechanical energy to create a lot of friction between the outer cone and the inner vessel to heat up the water. And the water heated up from theta 1 to theta 2 degrees centigrade. The work done is like an angular torque applied for a particular degrees. So uh, one rotation of that cone is 2 pi radians and if you rotated it 5 times it's 2 pi into 5. That's the angle by which it rotated and the weights that we hung up there determined the friction that we applied. So mg into r is a torque and the torque is due to the weights and the weights that we put was just sufficient to balance the frictional force that the cone exerted. So we instead of using the frictional force formula we are using the mass into gravity as the weight into the radius of action which is the radius of the top plate. Having found the work done uh, formula there let's come to the heat side. What happened to the water? The water's temperature raised from theta 1 to theta 2. Let's say it's 5 degree centigrade. So the amount of heat required heat energy needed to raise the temperature of water is the specific heat of the element into the mass into the rise in temperature. So the water's specific heat let's say is S1 multiplied by the mass of water into the same increase in temperature that gives a specific heat of water. Similarly the specific heat of the inner container and the specific heat of the outer cone is bundled into one and you get the heat energy required to raise their temperature too. So everybody's temperature raised by theta 2 minus theta 1. Now you have to just balance the work that we did in rubbing the cone against the inner container to the heat energy that was demonstrated in raising the temperature of the water. So there you are, mg into the radius of action into the number of angles covered which is 2 pi into n equal to that equivalent called j and let's keep it aside for a moment into the total heat energy which is the ms1 plus ms2 into the common increase in temperature 
when you equate that, you, we know everything except J. So you will get the equivalent of heat. And uh, that's a constant, and that's uh, 4.186 joules per calorie. I hope this presentation was useful to you. Uh, thank you, and bye-bye.